Well, good morning, everyone. I have a very personal reason for being here because I am a cancer survivor. So thanks to the uh, Canadian Cancer Society for asking me to be here this morning and share the reason why I'm involved. Three years ago, I got to tell you, I had barely heard about the relay, and I had never had any involvement in it whatsoever. But that all changed for me in June of 2007 when I was in my hospital bed at the Tom Baker in Calgary. My office staff sent me six photos of the team they had entered and the team they had called Larry's Gang. And two of those original team members are here this morning. And you have no idea what motivation that caused me while, while I was in the hospital. My, my response was, I will be there next year. And I was. And now it looks like three years later, our company will have as many as 40 people involved with the relay this year. So that's been, it's been great. But my story is in 2007, when I was 52 years old, I just wasn't feeling good. Um, I, you know, I, I just seemed like I had a cough and a cold and felt kind of run down and I couldn't seem to get rid of it. And I, I, I finally went to the doctor after three weeks of that. I've been very healthy before that. Went to the doctor and said, you know, I'm going on holidays in a couple of weeks. Give me some antibiotics to get rid of whatever I have. So he did. I really never even checked me out. But I got worse while I was taking those antibiotics. So I went back another week later, had some chest x-rays, um, had some blood work done. And uh, that day, January 31st, uh, my nightmare began. My wife walked into my office the next day. I'd gone back to work the next day and told me I had leukemia. It took me to Red Deer Regional Hospital Emergency Unit. I spent overnight there. And the next morning, it was off to uh, U of A in Edmonton. At 3.30 that afternoon, after having all kinds of tests, I was told that I had acute malignant leukemia, or AML, and that I was in critical condition. I was told I was, I was going to be taken to bed immediately and receiving my first chemo treatment that night. And I remember telling the doctor, you know, doc, I'm not that sick. You've got to do some more tests. And his response, which I will never forget, is if we don't start your chemo immediately, you will not survive beyond a few days. So began my cancer journey and the biggest fight of my life. Now, the type of cancer I had is a blood disorder where my white cells multiply rapidly into blast cells. And instead of the good that they do, which is fighting disease, they actually start attacking the body and they will kill you. Normal counts, normal white counts are in the range of 4 to 10. And my count was 387,000. There was some doubt that I would survive that day. My first night in Edmonton was uh, quite an experience. I'd never been in a hospital in my life before. I barely knew what leukemia was. I was scared. Uh, my chemo nurse, as I called her, was uh, spent about a half an hour explaining what was what the chemo procedure was and trying to calm my fears. And she told me that quite often how a person handles that first chemo treatment, that first day, is a good indication of how you will react. And the next morning, I actually felt pretty good. However, it was at that point when again my wife walked in that it really hit me, and all I could say was, "How the hell did this happen? I'd never been sick a day in my life." And I was at work yesterday. How could this happen? I got through uh, my first seven days of chemo pretty good. I had seven days off, and then I had my first bone marrow biopsy, which revealed that I still had a large number of blast cells. So it was another six days of chemo. And then four weeks of waiting to find out that my, my uh, white count uh, was still out of whack. After the first biopsy, I asked my doctor, how long am I going to be off work? Because I thought I was going back to work in a week or two. And his response was six months. And if you need a stem cell transplant, which I had never really even heard about at that point, it'll be a year or longer. After the second biopsy, it was clear that I would need the transplant. And at this point, no one said too much to me, but I figured it out that if I didn't get into remission, I didn't survive. And if I did get into remission, I needed that stem cell transplant as soon as possible. The search for a possible donor was started, and at this point, to give me a break, I actually came home to Red Deer for 12 days. I've been in hospital for seven weeks at that point. My third round of chemo was a particularly nasty round during which my gallbladder stopped functioning and much later was removed. And after another four weeks and another biopsy, I was finally in remission. The same day I was told I was in remission, I was also told that they had a possible donor. Now is a tough day. At this point, I've been in hospital for 11 weeks. So it was now off to Calgary where all the stem cell transplants for patients are being are done in Alberta. The doctors in Calgary explained the procedure, but they only gave me a 50-50 chance of survival. I went through another round of chemo, uh, 
two days of full body radiation, which kills all of your white cells and a whole bunch of other things as well, including your immune system. On June the 8th, 2007, I received my life saving donation of stem cells. And that procedure for me is basically like a, like a fairly lengthy blood transfusion. For a few days at that point, I struggled for the first time with severe nausea, and my weight was down to 128 pounds. At that point, my weight count was zero, and after eight days, it started to grow slowly, which was really good news because it proved that the transplant was actually working. However, another problem occurred, and my platelets began to fall. Um, after four weeks, I was allowed to leave the Tom Baker, but I had to stay in Calgary for three months. I stayed with my brother and his family, and it was a trip to the hospital every day for weeks until I was finally able to come home for a weekend in August. The second weekend home, some severe rejection set in, and I was ambulanced back to Calgary again for several more weeks. Uh, the first week of November, my platelet count, which is normal at about 150 to 400, was down to three. There was talk of a second transplant, and we began the preparation for that, including contacting the donor medical staff. I was given one more transfusion of platelets to help in another medical procedure, but still the counts fell. And then, all of a sudden, a week later, a miracle occurred, and my, white, my, my platelets actually took off. A week after that, I was home. And believe me, after nine months of being away from home, there is no place like home. Living in and out of another family's home, even if it's your brother, is never easy, especially when every single day for pretty much a year, you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. The 50-50 chance of survival and how lucky I am comes to mind. And I think that out of the five of us who were in Edmonton at the same time, only two of us have survived to this point. I spent several more months in recovery at home, and finally after 14 months, back to work. My long-term chances of living a normal life are good, and I'm truly grateful to a lot of people. In the past few months, I've, and years, I guess at this point, I've been involved in things that I never used to think about, including the Relay for Life. I'm a Cancer Connection volunteer, and I've also done some work with Canadian Blood Services, speaking to various groups about the importance of blood donations. There are many people that I've already thanked for my recovery, including my family and medical experts and people that I work with. But there's one group of people who really saved my life, and that is ordinary people like you who do extraordinary things in this world. They give blood or they assist with fundraising. If my stem cell donor in Longview, Texas was not a blood donor, I would simply not be alive today. If research and development in the medical field had not taken place and not be ongoing, I wouldn't be alive. If people just like you were not blood donors or relayers, so many of us in the world would simply not survive. So for all of you here today, my deepest gratitude for who you are and what you do. So let's get ready to fight back once more. Let's relay.